So you've discovered command line rendering in Blender and you no longer have problems with your renders, but now you need to construct the command and reference the Blender executable, the Blender project file, remember dash B, and remember the command line arguments for the render every time you want to execute a render. Some time ago, I decided to simplify the process of rendering through the command line. I wrote a program poorly named Blender Render that reduces a lot of the mundane process and remembers all your command line configurations for multiple Blender projects. So I'll post a download link in the description below. Um, the download link will lead to this web page. All you need to do is download the zip file. So something to keep in mind is there's only a Windows version right now. I'm happy to work on a Mac version if people find this tool useful and there's actually demand for a Mac version. So after downloading, all you need to do is extract it into its own folder, like so, and then just dive into that folder. So let's take a look at how we can use the Blender render to uh, do some renders for us. Go ahead and open the executable first. You'll be agreed with the most basic and bland UI you've ever seen but let's keep going. So the first thing you need to do is specify the Blender executable path. So go ahead and click this button here. We're gonna say Blender 3.3 and just click Blender.exe. Okay, next we need to add one or more projects that we want to be able to trigger command line renders from. So go to add. So I already have two set up. I'm gonna add you know, the red cube first. So you have the option to change the name so it's easily identifiable for you, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do something like this. What really matters about this is the file path here. So you can't change that because that's the, the reference to the project, right? Okay, next thing you need to do, set the command line flag. So for this one, we're just gonna do, you know, dash F1, so render frame one. Now, the program is very aggressive in saving the state of everything you enter, such that when you reload, everything will be restored. But if you're ever paranoid, just hit the save config button. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add a second project, this blue cube, and I'm gonna call it this. Okay, I messed that up. I'm going to call it this. Rename it. Cool. And then for this, I'm going to do dash F3 dot dot five. So that's going to render frames three, four, and five. Um, I'm not going to hit save config this time. Now, before I hit render, um, I'm going to close the program and then reopen it. And now you can see everything is restored. So now we're going to go ahead and hit a render. And as you can see, this is the command line output actually, and you see something rendered. So let's see what it actually looks like. So I have it stored in this temp folder and we see this red cube. Cool. Now I'm gonna go back to the blue one and we expect three, four, and five to be rendered. So we hit render again, wait a second, and there you go. So you can see here we have three, four, and five. So the last thing we need to talk about is this user settings.txt file. This file has all the data that you enter in the program. So if we go back here, you can see everything lines up pretty exact, right? So you have the Blender executable, you have these two projects. So the, here are the custom names right here and the paths right there and there. And then the command line flags per project, dash F1, dash F3 dot dot five, all there. So I'm mentioning this so you don't open it and then start modifying it and or, and or delete it. Um, just don't mess with it. Otherwise, things could go wrong. So that's everything. You know, if you run into any bugs or um, you have any feature requests, feel free to reach out. And that's all. Thanks for watching.